everyone, this is Max at MaxCTCG. Thanks for joining me in another video. So in this video, we're going over the last remaining cards from Infinite Forbidden. We'll jump into the article. You can check these out together. And if you want to look at it, I'll have it linked in the description and you can check it out yourself. All right, so first card we have is Broomy, level two light spellcaster tuner effect monster, attack 700, defense 700. You can only use this card's name's effect once per turn cannot be used as a synchro material except for a synchro summon of a level 8 or lower monster. You can reveal this card and one monster in your hand. You cannot special summon from the extra deck, nor declare attacks with monsters for the rest of the turn except synchro monsters. Special summon one of the revealed monsters, and if you do, banish the other. Right, so this first card I don't think feels that great. It is a tuner that you could special summon out of your hand pretty easily, or another card to make plays but you're banishing another card to get this onto the field so you're kind of going minus one so unless there's something where maybe you are triggering this in a deck where the banish actually does something uh, that could be helpful so maybe this is good in thunder dragons uh, to make some fusion play or synchro plays uh, maybe that's an option like a thunder dragon synchro deck uh, maybe there's something there but i think you'd really have to be benefiting off the fact that you're banishing the other card uh, for this card to be good. But it is a level 2, so there's some level 2 synergy and tuners um, that you can bring onto the field, but you are locked into synchros, so I'm not sure how well that would work in a standard like sprite list. Uh, but there's synchro sprite, so maybe something there. Next we have Menko Mori, level 1 earth wing beast tuner effect monster, attack 0, defense 0, first effect up to thrice per turn. If your opponent normal or special summons a monster or monsters, you can target one of them, toss a coin. If it's heads, change that monster to face up attack position. If it's tails, change it to face down defense position. Second effect, once per turn, if a monster or monsters is flipped face up or face up monsters change to face down defense position while this monster is on the field, even during the damage step, you can target one of them, change it to face up attack position or face down defense position. So overall, I actually think this card's interesting. The ability to just normal summon this onto the field and if your opponent tries to summon three times, you just flip them all face down. That's pretty good. The only problem is you can't control it. So this gets into a luck parameter, which I don't think people would want to count on uh, using. But if you could just control this being, hey, every time you summon its tails, you flip it face down. I mean, a lot of decks, I think, would struggle with this. So I think this has some potential if you could always consistently get this thing on uh, tails. And also, maybe in some flip of like flip based decks, you can do stuff where you're flipping monsters up and down, triggering effects, things like that too could be potentially useful. But unfortunately, these kind of coin flip effects are always a little bit too hit or miss. But I think it'd be really cool if Konami actually made a really cool coin flip deck uh, where both effects were good. And maybe on your opponent's turn, you get to choose the effect or something. I, I think there is room to make flip effects good, uh, potentially. So it'd be cool to see if Konami ever does that. Alright, so next we have May Malapard, level 2 light beast effect monster, attack 100, defense 100. If this card is the only card in your hand, you can special summon it. This card is special summoned by its first effect, it attack becomes 2500 to the end of your opponent's turn. If this card battles an opponent's monster, if you take any battle damage they would have taken instead. If you take battle damage from a battle involving this card, change its attack to 0. Then if you have 2000 life points or less, attack becomes 5,000. So I really love the art on this card. I think it's super fun. Um, when it comes to the playability, I, I don't think it is. I mean, you can splash someone out, but it has to be the last card. It does gain a boost in attack, but then if you do any battle damage your opponent, you take it, so that sucks. But then you know, if you're 2,000 life points or less, instead of going to zero, it can go up to 5,000. Uh, but you've already attacked at that point. So I, I feel like there might be something weird and gimmicky with this card. Uh, that it can do for some weird OTK or something, but I don't think it's going to be playable uh, competitively uh, in its own right. But something about this just kind of screams gimmicky OTK uh, to me, so I'm curious on, on how that might work. All right, next card we have Trap Gatherer, Equip Spell Card. You can only use this card's name second and third effect once per turn each. Equip monster gains 4 inch attack for each trap in your graveyard. 2. After damage calculation, when the equipped monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle, or inflicts battle damage to them, you can send this card to the graveyard, set one trap from your grave. Three, if a face up traps or traps you control would be destroyed by card effect, you can banish this card you control instead. So I think this card is kind of interesting. 
you know, in a trap based deck, you can give your monster a boost, which is kind of the most minor thing out of the two. Also, you get the damage calculation effect, or if you destroy a opponent's monster, which is probably going to be easier because you have, you know, a stronger monster on the field. You can send this card to the grave to set one trap card from your graveyard. So this gives you some recursion, uh, which is nice. Um, and then if any of your traps would be destroyed, you can banish this instead. So I could see this maybe being played in like a stun strategy or maybe paleo potentially. I, probably not, but maybe some type of trap strategy where you have the ability to want to recur your graveyard based monsters. Um, I could see maybe there being some potential with this card. It doesn't seem amazing, but maybe there's something to it. Um, I don't think it's necessarily bad. I, I think it like has some options for it. Uh, but even though I think it has some options, I probably don't think it's going to see play. Uh, but I think there's always potential to kind of keep this in the back of your head. And then next we have Interdimensional Matter Translocator. Continuous spell card. You can only use the first, second, and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. First effect, you can target one monster in the field, banish it, then return it to the field. If your opponent activates a card or effect, you can target one face of monster whose effects are negated, banish it, then return it to the field. And third effect, before resolving an opponent's card effect that targets this face up card, banish this card until the end phase of the next turn. So this card seems really weird to me. I feel like this is one of those cards that you'd want to be in a banish based strategy. Again, something like Thunder Dragon maybe could utilize this because you can just target your card, banish it, and then it just returns to the field. It's not during the end phase. So unless there's some translation issues on this, then I could see that being a little bit different use case because you can use it just to remove a card to the end phase. But if it's just banish it, it comes back. It really only seems to be used for trigger based effects. There's also like the second effect that if your opponent activates a card effect, you can target a face up monster whose effects are negated, banish it, return it. When it returns, I don't think the effects are negated anymore. So that kind of gives you the option to maybe play around when your card is being negated, which is interesting. So some cards have the ability to regain uh, their effect when they come back to the field. That was something people used to do with SP and Baron. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting interaction, though Baron's banned now. And then you also have the option to kind of protect this card that if anyone targets it uh, while it's face up, you can banish it to the end phase of the next turn. So it eventually comes back and you kind of get to keep using it. It, it seems gimmicky. It's definitely kind of like an extender based like trigger effect card that might be interesting in a certain strategy. But besides that, I don't, I don't see this seeing a lot of play. But that covers the kind of four cards. They're more filler cards at the end of the set. But let me know what you guys think. You know, which one did you enjoy the most? You know, effect wise and which did you enjoy the most art wise? Um, I really liked the little lion card art wise. I thought that was really cool. And effect wise, I thought this uh, Venko Mori seems like it has the kind of most potential. Uh, but again, some also some banishing based support uh, in these cards as well. All right, everyone. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video and I'll see you there.